Hello, uh, my name is Niall Peppers. I am the art teacher at Westminster Special Schools and I'll be talking you through this video, accompanied by the music we listen to in class. This video is for parents and carers to support a range of students with varying needs and interests. Please feel free to just focus on the parts that you find useful. Thanks. Art, Objects of Exploration. This video gives guidance as to how we support students' sensory experiencing and understanding of object qualities. Objects of Reference, Paintbrush. For an art session, we use a paintbrush as an object of reference. A student can look, hold, and feel this object. For hand over hand, we can run the brush from hand to fingertips, or give a small circular motion on the shoulder or cheek. Hand massage, to wake up the hands for maximum sensitivity and interaction. Object of reference, the tub, pot or tube of cream can be held, squeezed and seen, and most importantly, be presented to be smelt by the student to build anticipation for the upcoming experience. Introduce cream, start with the muscular pad along the side of the hand below the little finger. moving across to the muscular pad below the thumb. Where the hand has a lot of tension and stiffness, you can use your thumb and forefinger to gently get between the hand and thumb of the student, slowly and gently easing the hand open with small circular pressure to the locked muscle beneath the thumb, to improve even slightly range of motion or provide relief to those stiff muscles. As with the thumb joint, you can gently open the hand by working from the wrist and palm up towards the fingers. In massaging the palm, you can focus on the spaces between the major bones of the hand that lead to the fingers. Eventually, working up to the fingers, along the finger to the fingertip, helping to give the student the sense through touch and pressure where the body ends. Where the student is responsive to our touch, here is an opportunity to the, allow the student to lead the massage. If highly motivated by hand massage and communication is emerging, we can offer the pot of cream to cause eye gaze, reaching or a grabbing response. And where a student can copy hand gestures, we can begin to use signing. Objects of exploration, brushes. As with all activities, where appropriate, we can offer the object to the student to independently explore, or as an object of reference. Here, we are showing a hand-over-hand -hand experience, exploring the sensation of movement and the coarseness of the hairs of the brush. We can follow a similar pattern to our massage program along the fingers on either side of the hand. We can measure the student's response through any change in behavior, a calming, a change in eye movement, pulling away, reaching out for the object, or any small movements that are responsive to the experience we are creating. With palm turned upwards, we like to run the brush from the forearm along the hand to the fingertip, hovering over the wrist and fingertips these are points at which the student may push up to meet the object. Small circular movements can also motivate the student to push back or reach out inquisitively. We can repeat this activity with a wide range of brushes, from softest to hardest, almost coarse. Here we are using a large paintbrush and then a small brush for buffing leather. 
where the student can take the brush and independently explore or brush themselves, they are showing motivated engagement. It is at moments like these that we can repeat our strategy to promote interaction and communication. By taking the brush away and offering it back, we can look for an eye gaze, reaching or grabbing response, and where a student can copy hand gestures, we can begin to use signing. Objects of Exploration Physio Toy As with all activities, where appropriate, we can offer the object to the student to independently explore, or as an object of reference. Where we start with hand over hand, creating the experience for the student, we repeat a similar pattern as with the hand massage and brushes. Starting by gently allowing the weight of the object to rest on the student's hand, slowly rolling the object towards the fingertips, turning over the hand and repeating. We can begin to look for signs of responsiveness from the student, pushing up at the wrist, looking to grasp and meeting the object with their fingertips. To support students' relationship between themselves and the object, we place the object in their palm and support a rolling action. This is a good exercise to support a student who is attempting to use their hands to push themselves around or to help them sit or stand. We are always looking for a student to independently explore the object, grabbing or clasping it. Again, where there is this level of motivated engagement, we can take the object away and offer it back, prompting interaction, reaching, choice and communication. Objects of Exploration Balls. Where a physio toy is too big or hard, we can use a variety of different balls, from soft to hard or small to large, to appropriately fit the small of the student's hand. For hand over hand experiencing, we explore balls much in the same way as a physio toy. Where there is a high level of attention and interest from the student, we use the movement of the ball to draw eye gaze and focus. Where a student is attempting to grab objects and we are developing turn taking, we can roll the ball towards the student. This can also be accomplished in a tray, where we lift the tray and watch the ball roll. This is an opportunity for communication and repeating the action. Objects of Exploration Marbles Where mouthing is not a concern and the student is beginning to explore with thumb and forefinger, marbles are an excellent object to explore to promote fine motor control and hand-to-eye coordination. Marbles can be explored in much the same way as balls, but as they are small and hard, offer a variation on the experience, providing a more vivid visual stimuli. This activity also offers the opportunity to begin organising and grouping objects, meeting ideas like counting. Where this level of interest and concentration is present, our communication strategies are again available.
objects of exploration, shaker. As we are exploring sound, we can shake or rattle the object by the student's ear, as well as showing them and letting them feel it. We do this to communicate the sensory pathway, hearing, that we are exploring. Where we are facilitating the experience for the student, we can shake the object in their open hand percussively, allowing the student time, where applicable, to reach out and find the sound-making object. A simple shaker can be made by placing rice or dry beans into a plastic bottle. This also provides a tidy way of exploring those materials, where the student can watch their movement. This way connecting the experiences of the material, movement and sound. Where the student has full control of both hands, we can model and assist the student to hold and tap. This can be extended, where successful, with a beater. We can explore the sound the bottle makes without rice, and without a lid. Objects of exploration, fabrics. To contrast with our exploration of brushes, which are rough or coarse, we like to explore an opposite sensation, softness. Here, in a hand-over-hand -hand presentation, we explore the fabric in much the same way as our massage and brush exploration, slowly allowing the material to be felt by all parts of the hand, which we can extend to the arm and cheek. Where a student is beginning to independently explore and grab, we can turn the fabric into a gentle tug of war, allowing them to feel the stretch and give of the fabric. Where we succeed in taking the material away, we again have the opportunity with a motivated student to implement our communication strategies. Exploring a range of fabrics with different tactile qualities is a nice way to extend this activity. Silk or satin, mesh, lace or gauze, spandex, tweed and denim.
Objects of Exploration Fan A fan is a great tool to create a sensory environment for a student where they can be independently experiencing. To feel the wind and then not is a great way of experiencing controlled sensory change. We can emphasize this experience by adding a piece of fabric that will visually represent the movement of the air, allowing the student to interact with the experience of fluttering. For predominantly visually stimulated students, we can organize this fabric to float over them, providing a rich visual experience. Similar to a parachute game, by turning the fan off, the fabric will fall onto the student, either their body or face. Where possible, we can look for signs that the student wants more. Where a student uses a switch, a time switch can control the fan, allowing for independence. Always give the student enough time to respond to the changing conditions. You can explore cold, wet air with a water mister and hot air with a hairdryer. Thank you for listening to this presentation.